Hi, this is the Truth of Love, and this is Clutch. Today's topic, entitlement of the counterdependent. So this has been a topic that has been coming up consistently on my channel, and I am loving that all of you are starting to use these terminologies such as codependence and counterdependence and symbiotic relationships and toxic traits and really discovering what makes you you. These labels that we throw don't necessarily mean good things or bad things. Instead, what we use them for is we use them as a form of understanding, as a form of really digging deep into our own interpersonal traumas, as well as the traumas of our exes or maybe even our current partners. The topic of entitlement from a counterdependent is a topic that I've been dealing with a fair bit this week, both from counterdependents that have reached out to me through my Discord and my coaching practices, as well as people that are coming out of relationships of counterdependency. And I can speak from personal experience. I can also speak through my coaching practices of certain characteristics, certain traits that tend to become repetitive. And because of these repetitive traits, I've decided to make this video as a constant, not only to the rest of you, but even to myself, to remind me of what the reasons are, to remind me why I should never revisit this path. And for those of you that are potentially getting involved with a counterdependent, I personally don't recommend you do it. And I will explain why in this video. So the first thing that we need to know about counterdependency is that these individuals are a product of their upbringing. The idea of heavy need for space, the idea of identifying themselves through external factors is a direct association with the affection that was given to them in childhood through mom and dad. The freedom of choice, after all, is the same aspect. I want to be free to choose my destiny. What they're actually saying is, I want to be free of being forced to suffer in isolation. This does become a bit of a paradox after all, because in the mindset of a counterdependent, any level of intimacy that they have felt up to that point eventually leads to high ends of suffering. So in their mindset, if I'm intimate with you, if I am vulnerable with you, it's only a matter of time before you leave me. So it's better that I leave you first in order to protect myself. This feeling of unworthiness, this sense of self, is a direct reflection of the treatment I received in childhood. And this is where the aspect of entitlement and where this comes in into the whole equation. Because the ego is so weak, because there is this fragile sense of self, a constant projection or internalization of imposter syndrome, the counterdependent feels the need to be entitled. For example, I feel the need that my spouse should do A, B, and C for me, cook for me, pay for my food, and compliment me constantly. At the same time, this expression, this emotional need that I feel early on in this relationship is a representation of my pain and suffering that was found in my childhood. Over time, as I consistently provide these very things that you invited me to provide, you start getting triggered. You start being reminded of the pain that you have suppressed. How dare you? compliment me consistently. How dare you do these things for me? I'm not rejecting the gifts that you've given me. I am rejecting the idea of what they represent. I am rejecting this core wound I have yet to address. And through my rationality and through my expressionness of feeling smothered, I will justify and rationalize within myself this notion that it is not me, it is not I that is the problem. It is you and your lack of commitment to something else. Because how dare you put me as number one? How dare you put me on a pedestal that I could never in my right conscious mind fulfill? This is the irony of counterdependency. I 
invite you into my world. I invite you into my home. I encourage set behavior. And in turn, over time, I will punish you for the very thing that I invited you in for. My rationality, as time progresses, will see this. And eventually, I will discard you in a very violent, if not very abusive way. I will do it to justify to myself the need that I can never go back to you. Because going back to you would remind me of this vulnerability. As time progresses and as time passes, I will slowly start feeling waves of emotions, waves of cognitive dissonance. At first, I will view my former partner that I discarded as being annoying, as being, quite frankly, weak. Over time, I will start missing the affection that they gave. I will start to realize that the emotion that I gave this vulnerability wasn't necessarily something that could be given by anyone. In fact, this wave of back and forth of these opposing views will be consistent. And through the chaos, I will see this person through a glimmerance of hope, hoping that they will be the person that I wish them to be initially. This wave of back and forth opposing view will remain consistent until I find a new target and repeat the cycle once again, or until the lack of emotions becomes so unbearable that I will trick my discarded ex-partner into reaching out to me, into action. This grandiose sense of self, this entitlement of action, by both wanting intimacy and rejection, always leads down to a single road for a counterdependent, and that road is a path of self-isolation. Eventually, the sources of social stimulation will dry up. Then and only then will the counterdependency, after they've hit that rock bottom, after they have completely isolated themselves, will they seek out the help that they so desperately need. The tragedy of a counterdependent is that they tend to be good people. Deep down inside, there is a child crying for help. However, that help can only come when they truly realize that they are the cause of their own suffering. This passive-aggressive nature and denial that is constantly projected onto the world, you're the problem, you're smothering, you're doing too much for me, how dare you do these favors for me, how dare you love me. It's not up to us to help them in these situations. You're now out of this equation, and instead of internalizing the damages that they have caused, they choose to project their issues on others. In turn, this projection and this need for constant gratification is what we call entitlement of the counterdependent. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed my episode. If you did, I would ask you to hit the thumbs up icon below. For those of you that haven't subscribed to my channel, I would highly recommend that you hit subscribed. And for those of you that are interested in coaching practices, you can find out information about my coaching on my website at www.thetruthoflove.net. With that said, this is Clutch, signing off.